presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 28th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that. And that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, but if you've got a question, go ahead and send me an email. Send that up early and send that to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a rally going on right now. It's an oversold rally. And the question is, is it likely to continue? And my answer to that question right now is yes. And we're going to go take a look at the reasons why. If we take a look at the Dow right now, up about 95 points, S&P 15, NASDAQ 147. Russell's up eight. Semis are up 45. Trendy's up 108. you got gold trade down 10 bucks. Silver's up 13 pennies. Lights recruit is off 69 cents. Natural gas up four pennies. 30-year treasury down 19 ticks. Printed out at 112.29. So why does Stevie think that the uh, rally may continue? Well, first, let's take a look at where we're coming from. How do you know where you're going to unless you know where you're coming from? Well, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, it's advanced decline oscillator. We know that it got down into the extreme oversold territory. Simple as that. When price starts getting down below that minus 150 level, we've got to expect and anticipate some type of bottom or bounce out here. Is it a bottom? Don't know. Is it a bounce? Absolutely. And should that bounce continue? The answer to that question is yes. Now, how are we going to make that determination? Well, what we're going to do, well, I tell you, there's a couple things we can do first. Let's take a look at market breadth right now. So I'll stay on this chart, and then we'll go take a look at the real reasons why. If we take a look at market breadth, though, on a 30-minute basis, you've got 59 trading above, 7 below. That's for the NDX 100. Those are bullish conditions. That says that rally should continue, at least up to resistance. We'll go identify where that level is. And with regard to the S&P 500, Right now, we've got 281 above, 56 below, above resistance, below uh, support out there. So again, you've got market breadth bullish for the 30-minute time frame for the ES and the NQ. Let's see how we're doing on the other time frames out here. And the other time frames being 60, 240. Uh, daily and weekly. We take a look at the 60 minute time frame chart in the S&P 500. It's getting close. 147 above, 178 below. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100 out here, the NQ, what are we going to take a look at? We've got on a 60 minute time frame, 27 above, 31 below. So it's getting close out there. 60 minute still in the hands of sellers out there, but it's getting close to a turnover. Now, let's go take a look at the reasons why this rally is likely to continue. And to do that, we're going to switch panels. We're going to go over over to our white background charts and we're going to look at the 30 minute time frames why are we looking at the 30 minute time frames well we'll look at these currency pairs a little further uh peter wants to take a look at the euro dan wants to take a look at the uup which is the etf or us dollar index but the bottom portion of the screen right now shows you the three currency pairs that uh, make up a significant portion 83 percent of the us dollar index and on a 30 minute basis there were td9 count there was a td9 count pattern that formed inside the euro now it's only 1110 so what we need to see in order for me to suggest to you that this rally will continue today is we need to see a close above that TD9 count top. And that's at, at 11.30. That TD9 count top, or high I should say, 1.0557. 
If we get a close above that, that's going to negate that signal. That'll form an A to B equals CD to the upside. And that's going to suggest that the rally, at least as it stands right now, should continue. In order for the U.S. dollar, and that would weaken the U.S. dollar, in order for the U.S. dollar to weaken with regard to the U.S. Japanese yen, it needs to close below its TD9 count breakout area. There was a TD9 count top that formed out here at the high, and then that took price right back, back to the breakout level at 149.15. If price closes below that, that's going to add to the idea of a weakening U.S. dollar. Finally, the last piece of this puzzle, or a piece of this puzzle, is the Great British Pound. The Great British Pound also forming a TD9 count top. Now, the resistance level for that, that price needs to close above, is 1.2214. Now, the euro's got about a 57% weighting inside there, so that's good enough to tilt the U.S. dollar index to move lower, but obviously the U.S. dollar index would move lower much much uh, uh, move much lower if we get the pound to take out that TD9 count top and we get the yen to take out its TD9 count breakout level at 149.15. Lastly, I'll take a look at the spot volatility index. Now that black line that's on there is the 50-day, is the, uh, 50, 50 period exponential moving average. And right now, price is sitting right at that precipice. I would say if price gets below that level, closes below that level, what is that level, Steve-O? That level right now as we speak, let me get that for you, is 17... Where is it? What the heck? It is 1792. We're at 1791. So watch 1790. This is intraday stuff out here that you and I are taking a look at, but we're trying to understand intraday what's going on. So that's with regard to the currency pairs and their impact on the U.S. dollar index. Now, if we take a look, we've got positive market breadth inside the ES mini for the 30 minute time frame. That's the only time frame right now. If we expand out this chart, and I were to say to you, tell me where the key battleground is. Where is the key level of resistance that will then suggest to you that this rally would extend itself? And you're exactly right. It's that TD9 count breakdown level out at the 43.34.75 level. Price has made it above the top of its bearish structured profile, closed above it as we came on the air. That was at 43.19.75. So its next battle in its next short-term change in trend signal would require a close above 43.34.75. That's where the next battle should take place with regard to the ES mini. How about the NQ out here? Well, the NQ... Right now, let's pull this back. Let's figure out where we're at. The NQ is also closed above the top of its uh, daily, uh, that daily profile, 30-minute profile. That's at 14,764. I would say, in order for the U.S. dollar index to uh, uh, signal to you and I that it wants to make a move to 49.43.75. That's right, you heard it here. You need to see a close above this bar. This bar well, it took place at. Uh, well, let me get my cursor out here. This is the bar that's on a 30-minute chart. Took place at 1530 hours yesterday. And then he had a little dark cloud cover that uh, formed after that. So that becomes a natural resistance point. You've also got a TD9 count top out here. We're just simply going to make it easy peasy. And if there is a close above 14,821.50, you should expect a move. Well, I said 43, I'm sorry. 14,943.75 out there. So watch those areas. Uh, if we take a look at what's going on inside the Dow, the Dow right now is dealing with its uh, top of its 30-minute profile, and that's up at the level of 33,855. If price can close above that for two consecutive bars, actually, if price can close above this high, and this high being 33,895, you would expect and anticipate a move to 34,012. Again, that's coming from the 30-minute time frame charts. Those are the euro, the yen, the pound, the ES, the NQ, and the Dow, as well as we took a look at that spot volatility index. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back to this break. We're going to look at MJ for Mike and Ashwood, the gold contract for ELO, UUP for Dan, and the euro for Peter. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. Steve at TFNN.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report? For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. back folks let's start the request line out here we're going to go take a look at uh, mj that is alternative harvest this is for mike in nashua his question is where is it headed so right now what price is doing with regard to uh, alternative harvest it is testing the bottom of its profile so first it's formed a daily td9 count top it does that on september the 12th that now has led to a test of the bottom of its profile now bottom of that profile is at 360 uh, now, a close below that would suggest lower price. Price is also testing a swing point. That's a swing point from September 22nd. That swing point has volume of 2.2 million shares. So far today, you've done 1.4 million shares in less than two hours of trading. This has volume. So this could be signaling to you and I that what MJ, Alternative Harvest, is getting ready to do is to form an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now, I would say you close below that 360 level today, that would do it. You don't really have, that's not the real level. It's really 360. 66, but because of the bottom of that profile there, let's make it really prove itself. That would be a close below 360. Now, if you get that, that then takes price. That gives you an initial price projection of 301. But what we can see down here is we can see a TD9 count breakout level. And that TD9 count breakout level would get us down to 288. So I would say a close below 360 today, you're likely to take, you're likely to get a um, price move down to the 288 to 301 area. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, it had a nice wave seven bottom, that's letter G, courtesy of the Chapman wave, and that took price right up to its TD nine count breakdown resistance level. That level, by the way, is $4.68. Price is now turned down, and another level of support is being tested. That is the top of its weekly profile. Turns out that's at 361. So you got 360 on the daily, you got 361 on the uh, weekly chart as areas to be watching. Again, you close below that, certainly on a weekly base for MJ. If you close underneath the 361 level, uh, and we've got that confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside, that would be suggesting a further 
pullback. And that pullback would say 310, 318, 333. So those would be the areas. So when we take a look at MJ right now, you're moving lower with volume. You close below 360. Odds favor you're going to make that A to B equals CD pattern to the downside. So, Mike, I hope that helps you out with regard to what you were looking for. If not, write back to me and I'll be happy to um, um, get you that information. The next request coming from inside the Tiger's Den, that is from e, that is uh, uh, from ELO, wants to take a look at the gold contract. So let's switch over to a, another set of panels out here. We'll take a look at the gold contract, which uh, busted through its TD9 count bottom pattern a couple of, uh, two days ago. Follow through, uh, uh, follow through yesterday, big follow through, more follow through to the downside today. So where is Goldilocks headed to? Well, first on a monthly time frame, price is back inside its profile. So if you're asking Stevie, where is the monthly profile support level for gold? We'd say between 1766 and 1848. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart for gold. Gold now has an A to B equals CD to the downside. It had that actually, quite frankly, from back here on August the, um, the week of August 18th. But now what you are doing is you are below the profile level. And if we get a close below 1925.10, that is suggesting lower price. We'll go back to my other charts to write, type in the A to B equals CD patterns that are out there. Let me do this here. On a daily time frame, the daily time frame here, what we can see is that uh, we are in wave number seven. So we should, you know, pay attention to that one possibility out there. But there's also roads momentum indicator signal that's been triggered, just like there was up at the top. The top uh, was identified with a three river evening star. So what you're looking for here is you're looking for a bullish reversal candle to confirm a roads momentum indicator bottom. Short of that, Price is likely to head lower. As we look at the other charts out here, on a 30-minute basis, no bottom signal. 60-minute, no bottom signal. 120, no bottom signal. Same for the 240, the same for the uh, five-hour time frame chart. So this is not looking very good with regard for gold, that is. But we do have the U.S. dollar index that's trading lower. But uh, gold doesn't seem to care as we speak right now. Now, this could be bar number four to the downside. If we take a look at uh, consecutive bars to the downside, we have seen this do eight, nine. We have seen this do nine bars to the downside out there. Um, so there's nothing here to suggest that uh, gold can't move lower. So now let's go switch over and take a look at uh, my other charts out here. We'll switch. I don't have those up yet, but we're going to put those up momentarily. So let's get over. We'll take a look at uh, Goldilocks. We'll go to the three time frame chart. We'll go to the gold contract. It's in December. And uh, let's go start typing in the A to B equals CD pattern. So here you got the weekly chart. And you can see that's the A to B equals CD that was always in play out here. That one to one price projection would get us down to 1838.10. If we take a look at that's on the weekly chart. If we take a look at the daily time frame, there's going to be a couple different A to B equals CD patterns. The larger one gets us down to the large one on the daily basis. I'm going to have to do this here. Sorry. It's getting too noisy for me, and I can't change the color. So we're just simply going to come back. And, oh, I, that's because I had expansions in there. That's why that was so confusing. We're going to get rid of those Fibonacci tools. Give me a moment here. Okay. So now let's take a look at the daily A to B equals CD patterns to the downside. The first one, we start with the high on May 4th, 2023. The lowest or the B point is going to be June 29th. The C point out here, 2028, 2027. It's going to be the high from July 20th. The one to one price projection that gets us back to what we looked at on the weekly basis. 1838.10, 1786.28 would be the uh, next uh, price projection area. So remember the 1838 level. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and show you the smaller A to B equals CD. And that smaller A to B equals CD starts out here with the July 20th high. And it starts out with a, a low out here for the B point of August 17th, the C point being the retracement into September 1. The one to one price projection level there is 1865. So we're getting our gold is getting near the area where it could form at least a short term bottom. And that would be looking at the 1865 level. Now, in order for that to take place, you need to see some type of bullish reversal candle out there. Not until that happens will we see a move higher. Now, I was surprised that gold wasn't trading higher because of the weakness that we've seen inside the U.S. dollar index. Uh, but sometimes that's just simply the way that it rolls out there. And that's the way that it's rolling as we speak right now. So ELO. I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for for Goldilocks. If not, let me know what you were looking for. The next chart, we're going to go take a look at the UUP. That's a way to take a look at the U.S. dollar index with me without me having to really shut everything down. So, Dan, I appreciate that. Dan's question is, 
Is there a TD9 count top that is uh, forming this week? So we'll get to those charts here momentarily. And the answer to that question is yes. You are in bar number nine on a weekly basis. So here is the UUP. You're looking at the center panel uh, screen here on the chart. And you can see you've got a, a bar number nine that is going to complete this week. Now, with regard to the U.S. dollar index, uh, or with regard to the TD9 count pattern, I should say, it can be the bar following bar number nine that generates that signal out there. If we take a look at the UUP on a daily basis, uh, Dan, you can see that price is pulling back. There is a sell the D point pattern in it because of this little bear separation candle right now. Uh, but what's really key here is price closing below that oscillator and change line. And for the UUP, that number comes out at 29.71. Odds would favor if price closes below that, that we see a further pullback. Pullback to where? Great question. I don't have the answer. And taking a look at these charts, I'd really want to go take a look at U.S. dollar index. But nonetheless, right now, the key level on UUP that you should be watching at day's end, at 4 p.m., is going to be that 29.71 level. If price closes below that, odds favor a further move lower out there. So I hope that that showing the, oh, I'm showing the gold chart. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. Give me a moment here. We'll put those over here. That way you can take a look at it. So let's do a quick rewind on here. Here you can see you're in bar number nine on the weekly basis out there. Again, it can be the bar following bar number nine. In fact, if the UUP does not close below that 2971 level, that's that green oscillator and change line. Odds favor it doesn't take place until next week out there. The monthly chart, very bullish. It's suggesting to run to 3076. Nonetheless, let's watch 2971 overnight. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So let's go to our next request. That is to uh, take a look at the Euro. That's coming from Peter inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, sorry, I was just doing a little bit of housekeeping here, trying to get to all the, uh, to, to the requests. So we're taking a look at the Euro charts. Now, if we take a look at the uh, monthly chart here for the Euro, we can see that price is trading below that red oscillator and change line. Those conditions, what that means is we have a falling price oscillator below zero. Those are very bearish conditions, short of seeing some type of bottom signal. Well, on a monthly basis, I don't have a bottom signal out here. So price is trading below, that's the first thing. So longer term, things are not looking good. On a weekly basis, there's the potential of a TD9 count top I'm sorry, TD9 count bottom for me between this week and the next two weeks out there. So we just kind of park that off to the side. If it's going to be this week, well, then the daily chart would have to show us a bullish reversal candle. And right now, all that we have is an inside bar. Uh, that could change by day's end. The other thing here, Peter, to be watching for, if the, ra if the euro is going to get, let me just expand out the chart. If the euro is going to get any kind of legs for any kind of a rally, to go ahead and then, uh, let me just get rid of this here, to go ahead and then uh, help to weaken the U.S. dollar index, uh, what we would need to see is a close above that oscillator and change line. In this case here, I'm going to have to say three consecutive days above that because the two-day rule kind of blew itself back here on August the 30th. So the key level of resistance right now on a daily basis, and this is going to change slightly, is 1.058. So that's the area there on a daily basis to watch out here. That's kind of controlling the direction of the market. Now, when we opened up the show, we were looking at the equity futures, the 30-minute charts. We were looking at the euro for that as well. And what we saw is that the uh, euro did go ahead and negate its TD9 count top. And what price has done is run right up into its next resistance level. So its battle is at 1.0569. I don't know if we mentioned that during the 30-minute uh, review or not, but uh, it, we're mentioning it now. The other signal to be looking at out here is we are in wave number seven. Now, that's going to extend itself. We just made a slightly higher high here uh, during this half-hour session um, that we're in right now at 11.32. So you could have some type of pullback. And if we do have a pullback inside the euro, watch the 1.054-ish area out there. That should be support. If it's not, uh, euro will head lower. We'll likely see the U.S. equity futures uh, sell off a bit. Uh, but so right now, you've got another topping pattern that it's got to contend with. That is wave number seven. Still hasn't proven itself to us. The only way it does that on a 30-minute basis is it makes a lower high. And you are dealing with some resistance at 1.0569. So watch that level, too. You get above that. The euro on a daily basis should then go target the uh, oscillator, its daily oscillator and change line. On a 60-minute time frame chart, we see a TD9 count top that is uh, going to likely going to form at 12 noon, complete at 1 p.m., right at its breakdown resistance level, 1.0569. So, no, the uh, equity markets in the rally that it's got right now, it is not out of the woods at all. It, in order to get out of the woods... Still going to need this U.S. dollar index to uh, weaken, which means that the euro needs to continue to move higher. So it's up towards some resistance levels, but these are cool because this helps you to identify what the market's communicating to you. So watch 1.0569. If price can close above that on a 60-minute time frame, that would be bullish for the counter trend move that is underway right now. On a 240-minute basis, you've got a TD9 count bottom. Uh, price is dealing going to deal with resistance at 1.0576 out there. You've got a, um, that's about it. That's about all that I've got for the uh, euro out there. So I hope that that helps you out, Peter, with regard to the euro, what it's doing. And if not, if you've got another question, let me know, and I'll be happy to take a, a look at it. Let's go to our next request. Let me shut down these charts. And our next request is coming from Bob in Spokane. Bob wants to take a look at ticker symbol ENVX, and he's looking for a support area. He likes the 1150 level. So let's get to those charts here. Give me a moment. I believe that might be is that here. It is not. It is here. It is. There we go. So now we got ENVX. Those are the charts that you see on my screen out here. And what Bob likes is the 150 level. What does Stevie's chart likes for support? Exactly. $11.59. So I think we're in agreement there, Bob, with regard to a, a great level of support. Now, it turns out that 11.59 is a TD9 count breakout area coming from the weekly time frame chart. 
It had a TD9 count top. It took price all the way back to where it broke out. Sometimes just getting back to the breakout level is a buy point. You're looking for an area of support, maybe a place to enter a position. Well, that's it. Now, what happens if price closed below 1159? Well, then there's an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside inside of ENVX. The B point out here was the week of August 25th. August 25th. 24 million shares passed hands that uh, week. Last week, it was 25.5. Yeah, B point had 25, 24.1. So you now have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. So if 1159 busts, let me just draw in what that would look like out here. It wouldn't be very good, that's for sure. And I'm just going to move this over to the uh, C point of this move. It gave you some kind of feel. So 11.59 is really key. Why? Because you could get an A to B equals CD. That would take you down to the $4 and change mark out there. On a daily time frame, the bottom pattern that's in play here is wave number seven. That's the letter G that shows up on my screen. Price is above. The, uh, it's red oscillator and change. On and trading with inside a new profile that has resistance at 13.08. If price can close above 13.08, then ENVX should rally further. Rally further to where? I'd have to go back to the recent highs out here, <coughs> taking you the swing point of uh, September the 12th. That would be a range of 14.46 up to 15.33 out there. So, Bob, I'm in agreement with you that that 1150 area, and specifically 1159, is a real key area of support. That if closed below, it's going to suggest, sorry, there's an ice cube that slipped out of that uh, little sip there. I can't swallow it. i got to chop on it. But anyway, watch that 1159 area. If you get it close below that, you're looking at much lower price. Now, even though I gave you a $4 price projection level, the next area of support to the downside would be at $9.16. So I hope that that helps you out. If there's any information else that you were looking for, please let me know. I'll be happy to get to that. Casanova inside the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at ARKK, one of Kathy Wood's uh, uh, ETFs out there. ARKK is what? That is the Innovation ETF. Now, Casanova is looking for an entry point. All right. So now we've got that set. If we take a look at the daily time frame chart, what do we see out here? We see a TD9 count bottom. So you've got a daily buying pattern and a new profile. Well, it's a profile that formed yesterday. If price were to close below, 38.37, the TD9 count pattern gets negated and you would jump ship. So you're looking for an entry into ARKK on a daily basis. You've got that signal. You have a new profile, as I mentioned. Support is at 38.61. Resistance is at both at 39.57 and 40.53 out there. And then you've got that oscillator and change on to 39.79. So the daily has given you a buy signal. The weekly chart has given you a sell signal, or it appears that it is the B point of an A to B equals CD. That was week of August 18th, 73 million shares. Last week was passed with 65 million. So lighter volume, but a wide ranging bar. So the next area of support, if we get a close below that daily TD9 count bottom, where price should then move to is 37.42. And if it gets below 37.42, even if that uh, B point was passed with lighter volume, it'll go ahead and form that A to B equal CD to downside. It's already formed it, but to go, we're going we're to hold off on putting it in until we see price take out that 37.42, and we're especially not going to put it in while we've got at least a daily TD nine count bottom pattern. So Casanova, you're looking for an entry point. You've got a great opportunity right now to enter because you're going to close that out if it closes below that TD nine count bottom. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. 
the Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's get to our next request out here. This comes from Dan F. He's looking to start a position in Jets. Jets is the ETF for the U.S. Global uh, Jets out there. And looking for a bottom, well, you will get a TD9 count bottom today if price closes below 1717. And you're at 1723 right now. So let's take a look at the A to B. Well, there's several. There's a couple different A to B equals CD patterns. You've got a bullish engulfing. So you've got a buy the D point pattern. So you're looking for an entry point. You're getting it right now. I don't know what it's going to look like at days. And we'll take a look at the uh, intraday charts as well. The weekly time frame shows you that you are in the bar following bar number nine. So the weekly chart is also suggesting that Jets uh, should find a bottom here. Now, there's a new profile that is formed inside of uh, Jet stand. That new profile has support at 1686 and resistance in the zone. The zone is 1759 to 1783. It is a bearish structured zone out there. Now, what you do like right now is prices above that red oscillator and change line. That's at 1706. You certainly want to see it close above that at day's end. So you don't have to worry about the TD9 count per se because you right now have a bullish engulfing candle out here. It's engulfing the last three bodies. Uh, well, it's at least engulfing yesterday's candle system. I can't tell if it's the day before uh, at this stage here. So you've got the buy signal. Let's look at the 30-minute time frame chart, see what's going on on an intraday basis. On a 30-minute chart right now, what you've got is this formed a uh, Rhodes momentum indicator bottom with a hammer candle at 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And what has happened in that last half hour is that price closed above its TD9 count breakout down area at 17.07. The 30-minute time frame chart is giving you a change in trend signal as well. So that's what you want to see when you're you know, looking for an entry point out here. So you're looking to take a long position. Uh, now would be the time to do that. Uh, if price closes, it, now would be the time to do that. If price closes below the close of bar number five, which would basically say, and again, that number is 17... 1717 out there. Um, 
you're still okay. You, you only would it close out this trade if you close below yesterday's low. That becomes your risk out there. And yesterday's low out there was at 16.74. What I can share with you on jets is the 10-day average true range is 33 cents. So make your stop 33 cents time, time, times some expansion. 30 cents is just the average daily movement. So say 33 were times 1.272 or 1.618. That becomes your stop size out there, and uh, that's what you uh, should take a look at. So Jets, yeah, giving you both the daily and a weekly signal. Now, when Jets formed its top out here, the top that I'm referring to is the one that formed the week of July 14th. That was a TD nine count top out there. So Dan, you've got the long position. That's courtesy of the TD nine count and the buy the D point patterns out there. Jim P wants to take a look at the TLT out here. And the TLT right now, Jim, uh, this is negating a TD nine count bottom. It'll negate that if price closes below yesterday's low. And yesterday's low is 88.09. You're at 87.93. Well, let me just update my other screen. Let's see exactly where you're at. You are at 88.30. So you're at 88.30 out there. If price, if, so if you can hold that level, that means close back above it. Again, it being 88.09, and we are above it right now, then the TD9 count pattern will hold. What you don't know is whether price is going to be able to take out that red oscillator and change line. But if it does hold that level, then that's where price should bounce up to, around the 89.81 level. If we look at the weekly charts out here, it looks horrible. It looks horrible because last week it negated a TD9 count bottom. What the weekly chart needs in order to institute a buy signal right now is a bullish reversal candle. That then would generate a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. And on a monthly basis, you can see that price is trading below prior lows. It's trading below last week's hammer candle. You know what they say about a hammer candle. If you uh, close below it, if you're long, you're wrong. It being the exact price here. Uh, a moment here. Pull this over on the TLT. That number is going to be 92.23. It closed below that this uh, month out here, and it does not look good long term. So I would say long term and intermediate term, things are looking like they want to continue to move lower. Don't forget, the Chinese are dumping bonds as fast as they humanly possibly can. So there is an automatic supply line out there of treasuries. So trading the bonds, the upside, just make sure that it's on an intraday basis out here unless we get some other type of major signal. And that we don't have as we speak. Again, you close below yesterday's low inside the TLT, and that low again was 88.09. That tells you that price is headed lower. So, Jim P., I hope that that helped you out, and thanks so much for your request. Inno, visual inside the Tiger's Den, wants to take a look at the NQ chart. So let's get down to the intraday-ish version of the NQ charts. We've got the daily in the left-hand side. That should pop up here momentarily. You'll see that uh, what we've got is a TD9 count bottom. That confirmed yesterday. The pattern completes today. You've got a new profile that is attempting to form. We talked about that. If price can close above on a daily basis, the center of its bullish structured profile, and that is at the price point of 14.877. If price can close above 14.877, now, what we should see is a move up to its oscillator and change line. Now, that number right now is printed at 15044. That number is going to change, so use that as a guideline. If, in fact, price takes out that oscillator and change line, that tells us about a further rally. Further rally to where? Well, a further rally to where? 15509. That's the top of that bullish structure daily profile. Odds would favor if you close above that red uh, oscillator and change line that that is where price would head to. It doesn't guarantee it because that oscillator and change line is red, but it is a pretty likely outcome out there. So we're gonna wanna watch how price deals with that oscillator and change line. And should it get there? Well, right now, as we take a look at the charts, the answer to that is yes. Also, when we take a look at the charts, when we began the show, the 60 minute time frame was still in a bearish position from its TAS market profiles. Well, turns out since then, We've switched to bullish. There's 42 above, 32 below. We are still bullish on the 30-minute time frame. So what we're starting to see here, you start to see market breadth switch from bearish to bullish when we start to see at least a change in trend out here. Uh, the next one would be the 240-minute time frame chart. It has 36 above and 41 below, so it's getting pretty close there as well. So we're getting close to seeing a oversold rally that should continue for two days, maybe three days out there, and then we'll simply have to come back and take a look at it.
at it. Now, the 15-minute time frame chart is suggesting that we should see a short-term top that forms between 12 noon and 12.15 with the retracement. Now, that retracement, should it take place, should take us back towards the 14.787-ish level out there. So that's what I see when I take a look at the NQ. I see an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside um, that has uh, formed out here. I'm seeing that in the 240, the five-hour chart, the two-hour chart. All, and each of those have roads meant to indicator bottoms out there. The two-hour chart says a battle uh, is uh, raging at 14.933. So watch that as price gets up to those levels out there. What else can Stevie provide for you with regard to the NQs? The only other thing I can do is go back to how we began the show, looking at the 30-minute time frame charts. Again, we've got the euro that uh, is suggesting that it wants to get uh, stronger. It has taken out a TD9 count top on the 30-minute basis. Again, that euro is taking on the 1.0569 area. Uh, we're slightly above that right now. A close above that is going to suggest the rally should continue. The yen still needs to bust through 149.15. That would add to a further rally inside of equities. You can see the Great British Pound right now is doing it, what it can to try to take out its TD9 count top. It's testing it. That high again is 1.2214. You close above that, <clears throat> that'll weaken the U.S. dollar index as well. Spot volatile index for its 30-minute time frame is now trading below that 50 period exponential moving average that's suggesting that the s p continues to move higher folks stay tuned we'll be right back currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. 
TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. All U.S. indices trading the upside. Dow's up 191, S&P 37, NASDAQ on 171. Russell's up about 20 points. We're taking a look at FLR. This is for Fletch inside the Tiger's Den. Fletch's long FLR that is flu Fluor Corp out here. And I don't have a reason to suggest that you uh, don't remain long. Now, on a daily time frame, uh, several days ago, last week, two weeks ago, this generated, well, I can tell you I was on a trading session of September 21st. This confirmed a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Now, what Price was unable to do is bust through any levels of support. And right now, Price is trading above the top of its daily profile. It's at 36.46. On a daily basis, what you're really looking for here, Fletch, is for Price to get above that green oscillator and change line. The current print on that is 37.20. If that happens, then you're likely to go retest that uh, Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. The weekly time frame is dealing with resistance as well. And that happens to be a TD9 count top at 37.20. Uh, last week, that uh, level was tested. It was rejected. But Price remains above profile, a green oscillator and change line conditions are bullish that level was already tested this week again you're looking for a close above 37.20 <clears throat> now that doesn't take care of that rose momentum indicator signal on the daily time frame but it would add to the idea of continuing to be long from a weekly standpoint and 38.20 happens to be the top of the monthly profile and that is a level that you certainly want to see price close above i believe that's the high of this rose momentum indicator top uh, though that was at 38.87 so 3887, you're all clear to move to the upside. I don't see a reason to sell. I see a reason to be cautious because price is taken on resistance levels. But again, you're above profile in the daily, you're above profile in the weekly, you're consolidating inside the profile levels on the monthly time frame. So all here looks pretty darn good. Lastly, Peter was asking about the 30-year treasury. Let me try to get that, at least pull that up on our screen out here. The 30-year treasury, as long as it can close above yesterday's low on the daily time frame, you'll have a TD9 count bottom. So that's the level that you want to be watching out there. That was at 113.11. Where price should head to is that red oscillator and change line. I don't think it's turned a corner, so to speak, just yet. But folks, stay tuned for the great programming. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Have a terrific Thursday.